Hi, I'm Jessica Cox and I teach fourth grade at Chapel Glen Elementary. This week we've been studying fossils in class and here is Mr. Crosland to help us out with that. Hello, now this is probably one of my favorite lessons because it has to do with fossils. And besides being a science teacher, I'm an avid fossil collector. You see, fossils are preserved evidence of past life. Now students, in order to break this down, what a fossil is, let's take a look at a couple of these key words. So a fossil is preserved evidence of past life. Now preserved, could mean something like it is saved. It means it's saved. It means that it could be like, you might have a sandwich in your refrigerator that is preserved because it's kept cool. Or you might have something in a can that has salt on it to preserve it. Or we even sometimes use sugar to preserve things. Now, we preserve things against air or light or bacteria these are all things that will destroy or dissolve something that used to be alive. So a fossil can be preserved. It could be, for example, a person long, long time ago was walking across a mud area and they left footprints as they walked. And maybe they had another person with them. Now there's two sets of footprints in the mud. And maybe they even have a small child with them. And all three tracks or footprints or in the mud. Now usually what would happen is more water would come in and wash away the footprints. But what if something special happened? What if on that day it continued to be dry and the sun continued to bake those footprints? In fact, it got so dry that all the water went away and those footprints were just there as imprints in the mud. Well, something else could happen. Maybe a landslide, or maybe the wind would blow them away slowly over time. But what if later, maybe a volcano far away sent ash up in the sky, and the ash came down and filled in those footprints, and it filled it in like a foot? There, locked in time for someone to discover, would be some preserved footprints. That's one way. Another way, what if there was a, a small mosquito that was flying around a million years ago and landed on a tree, and that tree happened to have sap coming out of it. You've seen sap like on evergreen trees or Christmas trees. What if that mosquito landed there and got stuck and died? Usually, it would, it would, it, maybe more bugs would land there or maybe a bird would land there and eat it while it was still stuck. But what if it got covered in more and more of that sap? And then what if that tree died and fell into some mud and was covered so there was no air, no light, no bacteria? That mosquito could be trapped inside of that sap and turned to amber, which is a type of material that might have a bug in it like a mosquito. And then millions of years later, someone comes and is digging and they find that chunk of amber, they polish it, and they look inside, and there is a fossil mosquito. Or what if there was a woolly mammoth when the land was really icy, and this woolly mammoth had just finished eating, and it was standing up on a cliff of ice, and it lifted its trunk and smelled something, and just as it took a step forward, the ice cracked, and it fell down into a crevasse, a deep crack was stuck, died, and the snow filled it in, and it was buried for 15,000 years. Along comes a warming period, and there, stuck in the side of the ice, is a woolly mammoth, still with the evidence of the food inside of its stomach, or the pollen in its fur, that's a fossil that is preserved. Or what if it was a dinosaur, like my tie, that lived a long time ago, 67 million years ago. And for some reason, this dinosaur was in a flood with a lot of its relatives and it got buried in a flood. 
most of the guts, most of the muscle, most of the hair, the skin, the feathers were washed away. But some of them were buried so quickly with no air, no light, no bacteria that they got piled up with layers and layers and layers of sediment. The minerals came through and changed the real bone into a type of stone called petrified. And then we come along later and we excavate those layers. We dig down slowly, 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 and we find a bone millions of years old that is now turn to stone that we have to carefully glue together, take back to a museum, and get it preserved so we can learn it. So that is the first part of a fossil preserved evidence. Evidence could be the real thing, like the mosquito. Evidence could be the imprint, like the people walking across the mud flat. Or evidence could be the actual woolly mammoth, or it could be the petrified bones. Now I get a lot of discussion, boys and girls, on this one, past life. And I've talked to lots of paleontologists. A person who studies ancient fossils is called a paleontologist. Not a geologist and not an archeologist. A geologist studies the Earth's rocks. An archeologist studies what people have left behind, but a paleontologist studies ancient fossils. And they all say, and they argue about this, because in science we like to argue, and we argue, we like to use evidence. They all say that something needs to be at least 10,000 years old. I mean, I wouldn't want to dig up my great grandpa, okay? That's maybe 100, 200 years old. Would that be a fossil? No. No, <laughs> it's only a couple hundred years old. So 10,000 years or older would be a fossil. Now, today's lesson, we're not going to go 10,000 years. We're not going to go 65 or 67 million years old from the dinosaurs. We're going to go even further back. We're not going to go 30 million years ago when the amber mosquitoes. We're going to go all the way back so far that I can't even get my head around it. We're going to go back 450 million years. 450 million years ago, M-Y-A. And what does M-Y-A stand for? Million years ago. Million years ago. ago. Okay, so here's what we need to understand. We have, on the earth, we have layers of rock. Layers of rock. And these layers are different sizes, and they're made of different materials. As sediments start to fall and we call this layers or sedimentary rock and so these layers if I go like this way down here may be a what helps a layer what helps erosion on a layer like this what do you think what, what, what causes erosion what would cut through these layers of rocks class water. water like let's put a river down here okay Let's put a river down there. And so if we have these layers on this side, we probably have the same layer over here, wouldn't you think? Yeah. And so go ahead and draw this. Okay. Now, here's my question. Are you ready? So here's some layers right here. And here we are at the top where the grass and the soil would be. We're way up here. I'll put some grass up here. Because this is the surface. Okay? I'll even put us up here. Okay, so this is, there's a name for this in science, and it's called stratigraphy. Everybody say stratigraphy. Stratigraphy. Stratigraphy, or layers. So here's a person up here going, hello. <laughs> now, uh, here's my question. I've taken kids to this place. Anybody know somewhere in America? where you see something like this, where there's giant layers and way down here is a river, Colorado River, where, what is this do you think? Anybody? A valley. It, a valley is good, it could be a valley. What Tower? else? The Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon. The Grand, you know why it's called the Grand Canyon? It's grand. <laughs> it's in Arizona. And when you go to the Grand Canyon, here's the cool part. Let's lay, let me label these layers, A, B, C, 
D, E, F, G, H. I just made these layers up. What do you think there on this side should be? A. A. They're the same layer. You understand that? You understand that you're well on your way to understanding about fossils. So if this one has strange rocks like that, this one should have strange rocks like that. If this one has weird things like that, that one should have weird things like that. Now, we don't know exactly when these layers were deposited, at what rate, but scientists do. They study these layers, and this is like a clock. You understand that? So here's my question. Which one of these layers do you think is the oldest? Which one is the oldest? I'm standing here. If we go, which one do you think is the oldest? Yes, which one? H. H, do you agree? H? Yes. yes. H is probably the, the very oldest. The old is at the bottom and the new. new is at the top. So here's a cool question I want to ask you. What if you find, what if you find right about here a fossil that looks like it was a seashell? And you find another one way across here, maybe across the canyon or maybe across the continent. What does that tell you if you find a fossil here and here? What does that fossil tell us? Yes? That something used to be there a long time ago and it's been buried. It's a long time ago. It's been buried. And if it's a, if it's a seashell, this used to be a? Fossil. By ocean. An ocean. So this may have been an ocean at one time. This may have been an ocean or a sea. So a fossil... A fossil tells a story. Okay, so let's take a closer look at some of my fossils. Now, I brought with you some things that are, I think are kind of amazing. This is um, this is part of a dinosaur. This is actually part of a triceratops <laughs> leg bone that came from South Dakota, and that has been fossilized. Now, when you hold these, never scrape or try to break anything off, but I'll let you hold these in just a second. There is a, that one, and now that is a fossil. Here is an Indiana fossil. That's a leaf. That's a leaf? A leaf that fell in mud millions of years ago and has been preserved. So we got a leaf, dinosaur. <laughs> this is petrified wood. This is a piece of wood that's 65 million years ago. So we have Lots and I brought oh a thing that really preserves and stays are teeth. And these are shark teeth that I've collected. And these shark teeth are made of a material. So this is not a modern shark. That is a shark that lived in the ocean millions of years ago. So shark teeth. And that is a big shark tooth. And so some of these I collected, for example, this is out in South Dakota where I took teachers and kids to collect. Here is a pine cone. Here is a tendon, this part of, of a dinosaur. Here's some petrified wood. Here's some scales from a fish. And there's actually some T-Rex or Edmontosaurus bones in here, some fragments of them. And so uh, this is some dirt. Some of the times I look for fossils, I look for really small fossils. So I collected this dirt and maybe I can find a really small tooth or a really small vertebrae. And so fossils come in all sizes, big or small. And, oh my goodness, here's one of my collections uh, that kids, uh, um, I'm gonna let everybody hold these. So we have parts of turtles. This is a pine cone. <laughs> this is a pine cone that's been fossilized from the time of T-Rex. So that tells us the types of trees that were there. So we'll set this off to the side for a second. Oh, that was like and then um, here is, here's one of my better 
shark tooth. This is a fossilized shark tooth. And it's about, you know, over a hundred million years ago. Wow. And it's preserved. All the soft parts are gone, but this is still, still preserved. Now, sometimes when we find a dinosaur bone, we make a plaster or a plastic cast of it so we can study it without hurting the real thing. And this is the bottom jaw, this side of a jaw, of a plant-eating dinosaur called the Edmontosaurus. Is that the long one? It has a lot of teeth. Well, these are all teeth right here. This is the one, this was a, a herbivore. It ate grass or vegetables. And this was also on T-Rex's menu. That was his favorite thing to eat. And we know that because the evidence, we find scratch marks and teeth marks on some of those bones. So this one is this part of the jaw. We're missing the other part of an Edmontosaurus. I'll tell you though, but some of these I just absolutely love. Check this out. Where's it? It's a leaf. It is a leaf. Look it's at that. It's a leaf from, the, um, from yeah, the trees that survived the winter. Yeah, these trees, these leaves fell a long time ago here in Indiana and they were preserved. And that part was on top of that part. So you don't want to touch this. It's just too beautiful fragile. and fragile. It's lasted for millions of years. You have a whole life. Well, huh, you think that's good? Check out this one. Oh, wow. That's one of a hundred teeth in a megalodon, a giant. Dun -dun. This makes jaws look like a guppy. <laughs> that's a that's one tooth. A one? Well, you know, jaws, we see the movie about jaws, the big giant. That's uh, five times bigger than our teeth. Uh, yeah, well, this one is a lot bigger. That's five times bigger than our teeth. Like yeah. Now, I'll tell you what you need to do. When you look at this, when you hold this, please be careful. Don't drop it because that's the real deal. So I have a lot more vertebrae, but uh, <coughs> this one, sometimes the entire animal. Ooh, what is that? That's a fish. It's a fish. It's a fish. It's a fish. Yeah. Well, is it's it real? Sardine. Yes. yes. It's, it's not a sardine. This was millions, but it looks like one, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. But this was a bony fish that lived, we'd have to look it up, it lived in the ocean, and it died, and it, it was sunk down in the mud, chalky mud, but there was no air, no light, and no bacteria, and it's been preserved. Now, someone found it, cut it out, and then now I have it. So. Beauty. But this is kind of cool. So remember I told you about evidence? Yes. Uh, oh. well, you guys, uh, so you know what this is, right? Uh, this is actually probably turtle. Prehistoric turtle feces. It looks just like uh, feces, which is, uh, you guys are calling it what? <laughs> yeah. But that tells us, how, this tells us a bunch of things. It tells us the size. It tells us. And if you, maybe you can even examine what was in there, it doesn't smell because it's millions of years ago. <laughs> Wait a second, so that means it yes. was what they just said? It is. Would you like to hold it? No. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. All right, check this out. I got to show you one more. Here's the bat. It is. It's been petrified. We'll share. And here's the last thing I want to show you. Check this out. Wow. This, is this is a T Rex tooth, but it's <gasps> but it is the replica. So this is, this, but this is very check this out. This is the root. <gasps> this is the root. Yeah, it looks like a claw, but it's not. It's a tooth. Okay, so these are real fossils. They all tell a story. Get the get the get the bone. Get the bone. <gasps> This feels like rock, but it's green. Whoa! Hey! Look at this! 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 Okay, so we had a chance to look at some fossils from all over the world, but these are from Indiana. In fact, these are some of my favorites. This is, these lived in Indiana when it was covered by an ocean, and they're called trilobites. And they, there's different species of them. This one has a funny name. It's called a 
flexicalamini miki. <laughs> <laughs> and this one's a, a flexicalamini celebra. So these are trilobites. Now I'll tell you, the fossils we're going to, uh, excuse me, the fossils we're going to look at came from the same time as these. But they're not all trilobites, although we might find a trilobite. So do me a favor. Would you, uh, and you get your spot back, would you go set this carefully without dropping it over there? And so I brought, uh, would you stay back please so you can have a spot back? So these are some of the fossils that I brought in today from that same place. These fossils are over 450 million years old. Just like they're on there. The trouble is these guys are, they haven't been cleaned or prepared. And so if you take something like this, and put it in some water, you're gonna see that the sediment comes off of it. And then we get a brachiopod that we can study. This is the hard part of a creature that lived in the ocean. Indiana's kind of famous for brachiopods. This one, what does that look like? A tooth. A tooth? A tooth. Yeah, it looks like a tooth. Like a dinosaur tooth. A crab. But, but this is a lot older than a dinosaur. This is a horn coral. It's coral that lived in the ocean. And we'll take a look in just a minute at what these, what scientists think that these looked like when they were alive. Now, this is just the hard part. It's got clay on it, so I'm going to get the clay off of it. See, the clay is the small sediments that actually stick to this and we can look how it turned the water <laughs> from sediments and it takes we're going to get this clay off of there there we go check it out so now you can see more detail Whoa. and i didn't get all the clay off it but see this animal lived like this and all the soft parts were in the ocean and would snag anything it could to eat what kind of animal? this is a horned coral well this is another kind of an animal. It's called bryozoan. It looks like a little, like a little tree, but it's not a tree. And so we have quite a few of these. Let me show you what, there's bryozoan. Repeat after me. Horn coral. Horn coral. Brachiopod. Brachiopod. Bryozoan. Bryozoan. Trilobite. Trilobite. And one of my favorite, that's a crinoid for crying out loud. Crinoid. You say crinoid. 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 Indiana is famous for some crinoids, and you can see a video about that later on one of my websites. So let's take a look at what these animals may have looked like in real life. So if you do a Google search, you can see this is what scientists think that the Earth used to look like back during the Ordovician. And if you take a look, this is a scientist and an artist's idea. But here is a cephalopod. Here are those horned corals that we were talking about. Here's the trilobites. In fact, let's look up some more of these. Let's look at this picture right up here. And here's another horned coral, cephalopods, crinoids. And let's take a look at uh, uh, some of the black and white drawings a little bit higher up there. Let's see here. And so I love this picture right about here. This one right here uh, is a... Uh, <coughs> This is what we might find today. Corals, gastropods, trilobites, horn corals, brachiopods, plesiopods. A gastropod looks just like a what? A seashell. A seashell or a snail? Or what a hermit crab might live in? So are you guys ready to go back in time and see what we can find from Indiana fossils? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, so let's go back. 450 million years ago. Okay, so right now we're gonna give everybody a sample of some Ordovician age phospholiferous soil. What that means is some of the small fossils that we might discover. Everybody, open your open that little footsie up. Keep coming, the next class line up there, next group line up. Keep coming, next. One spoonful each. Line up. Next one. Now we only need a small spoonful because we got to get rid of a lot of clay. So class, we are going to continue to dunk the um, 
fossils in the water and we're going to try to get rid of all the sediments. So you're going to have to dunk it. It's going to feel kind of sticky and that's when you know you still have sediment on inside of your, your footsie. So I want you to keep dunking. You're going to notice your water is changing color. And that's because all of that clay and, and those sediments are coming out. So keep dunking. You may even need to feel. And once you feel, you'll see it, feel that it's kind of sticky still. And that means that there are still clay and sediments inside. Okay, so you're you're squeezing to make sure there's no see that's still got some gray in it. So we really need to have more in here. So what I want to do is we're gonna switch cups now. And we're gonna keep doing it. Already. Is it still coming out? Here you squeeze it for me. Squeeze that in. Get your, squeeze inside the water. Put it down in no no, put it down in the water. Let your let go. Use two fingers and squeeze it inside the water. Go ahead and try that. Two fingers. Two fingers. Squeeze it. Rub it. Squeeze it. There you go. Keep going until it feels crunchy. Okay, so we're pretty close. This one, we've been squeezing a lot. I don't, let's see here. I really, really want to get all that, all that silt out of there, all that clay out of there. And, um, because we want to separate that from the hard parts. The fossils are the hard parts that we have here. So you see how I got almost, and I'm rubbing it like this. I can hear it, listen, you can hear it. You hear it crunch? Yeah, I do. Okay, so dip, dip, dip. And I'm gonna try one more time on this guy right here to rinse it. Okay, and you can't over rinse this, but don't get a hole in your, <laughs> in your footsie because you'll lose your fossils. All right, so now, here we go. Check this out. I think I have this enough because look, the water is just barely turbid. That's a fancy word for it. you can't see through it. <laughs> and here's the hard parts of our fossils left. Okay, so let's reveal and see what we have. So then I want you to carefully open this up. Oh, look at this. These are all of the hard fossil parts. Now they're still wet, so you, you want to be careful. Oh my goodness. Uh, hand me a hand lens right there, would you? Oh, here we go. I think I got one. You got more than one. You got a, uh, you got some really great ones. In fact, look at this one right here. That is, put, put your hand out. Let's see this one right here. Check that out. That is a crinoid, piece of a crinoid, an animal right there. Yeah. And look at all these pieces here. So, well, there's another piece right there. Yeah, look at that. So, I'll tell you what. What? Use your hand lens. Use your worksheet. See what you have. So I want all of you to go back to your seats and get out this worksheet. <clears throat> and it has all of the different fossils. So you are able to uh, undo your footsie and put it on your paper towel and use your hand lens and figure out what fossils you have. Cool. So you want us to like take it out? So as you can see, we've had a lot of excitement from something that's very, very old, an Indiana fossil. A fossil tells a story, and today these students are learning that story.